Greetings, brothers and sisters. God bless each and every one of you today. Hope everybody's doing well. Again, if you are subscribed to this channel, we are watching for our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Titus 2.13, looking for that blessed hope in the glorious appearing of our great God and Savior, Jesus Christ. Jesus is coming soon, and we're going to be watching on this channel. Again, we are not going to set dates because we do not know when that day is, but we very clearly see that day approaching, and we will be watching on this channel until the trumpet sounds at the appointed time, and Jesus Christ comes for his church. Folks, this message today has really been on my heart, and I'll tell you why. In case you don't know, tomorrow, which is December 7th of 2022, is Pearl Harbor Remembrance Day. Now, for those of you that don't know, Pearl Harbor is a United States naval base near Honolulu, Hawaii, that was the scene of a devastating surprise attack by Japanese forces on December 7th of 1941. Just before 8 a.m. on that Sunday morning, hundreds of Japanese fighter planes descended on the base where they managed to destroy or damage nearly 20 American naval vessels, including eight battleships and over 300 airplanes. More than 2,400 Americans died in the attack, including civilians, and another 1,000 people were wounded. The day after Pearl Harbor, the assault, President Franklin D. Roosevelt asked Congress to declare war on Japan. This was a surprise, a surprise attack on Pearl Harbor that changed everything. No one was expecting, no one was expecting them, and it came upon Pearl Harbor as a snare. Now, why am I bringing this up? Well, because according to Scripture, that it, that is exactly what the coming of the Lord Jesus Christ to snatch away or to rapture. His church is going to be like. In fact, when you go to the book of Luke, chapter 21, verses 34 to 36, the Lord Jesus Christ says the following, And take heed to yourselves, lest at any time your hearts be overcharged with surfeiting and drunkenness and cares of this life, and so that day come upon you unawares. For as a snare it shall come on all them that dwell on the face of the whole earth. Watch ye therefore, and pray always, that ye may be accounted worthy to escape all these things that shall come to pass, and to stand before the Son of Man. So we're told very clearly, when this day comes, it's going to come as a snare. It's going to come as a total shock. No one's going to be expecting it, except if you're watching for it. But for a majority of the world, as a snare, it's going to come on all them that dwell on the face of the whole earth. Watch ye therefore, and pray always that you may be accounted worthy to escape all these things that shall come to pass and to stand before the Son of Man. So how are you accounted worthy to escape all these things that shall come to pass? It's by putting your faith in your trust in the blood of Jesus Christ, by believing Jesus Christ died on the cross for your sins. He was buried and he rose again. He resurrected on the third day as it is written in the scriptures. Uh, accounted worthy to escape all these things shall, shall come to pass, referring to the coming tribulation period, which we are not in yet. So if you are saved, you will not be here for this horrific time that is coming on the earth. But the amazing thing is when you go to verse 35 there, for as a snare it shall come upon all them that dwell upon the whole earth. When you look at that word snare there, the Greek strong concordance, G3803, of the word snare, it translates to pagus, P-A-G-I-S. And when you look at the definition there, you're going to see this. A snare, trap, a noose, uh, properly of snares in which birds are entangled and caught. So think of animal traps. when Whether it's uh, birds and beasts are walking around, we know the trap's been set for them, but they don't know the trap's there. So they're walking about go, doing their thing, and then once they step in that trap, that's it. They weren't expecting it. It happened suddenly. So again, looking at the translation of that word in Luke chapter 21, verse 35, for as a snare, snare, again, Greek strong concordance, G3803, of the word snare, it translates to pegas, a snare, trap, noose, uh, properly of snares in which birds are entangled and caught, unexpectedly and suddenly. That's exactly how the coming of the Lord Jesus Christ to rapture his church is going to be. People are going to be going about their own, their own business, 
going about their life, and bam, it's going to happen. You know, it reminds me of the days of Noah and Lot. People will be going about their business despite all the evil and the craziness going on. You know, in Luke chapter 17, verses 26 to 30, the Lord Jesus Christ says the following, And as it was in the days of Noah, so shall it be also in the days of the Son of Man. They did eat, they drank, they married wives, they were given in marriage, until the day that Noah entered into the ark, and the flood came and destroyed them all. Likewise, also as it was in the days of Lot, they did eat, they drank, they bought, they sold, they planted, they builded. But the same day that Lot went out of Sodom, it rained fire and brimstone from heaven and destroyed them all. Even thus shall it be in the day when the Son of Man is revealed. So we're told as it was in the days of Noah and as it was in the days of Lot, which it was just pure wickedness. And I look around the world right now, and I, me and many, many, many others have done videos. We are living right now as it was in the days of Noah and as it was in the days of Lot. But despite all the evil, despite all the wickedness, people are still running around like it's normal, like it's business as usual. And that we're told that's exactly what the state of the world is going to be like when the Lord returns, as it was in the days of Noah and as it was in the days of Lot. And when that day comes, it is going to come as a snare. Suddenly, just like an animal that's walking around, when that trap is set, the animal doesn't know the trap set and it walks right into that trap and then bam. Likewise, when Jesus Christ comes for his church, People are going to be going about their business as usual despite all the wickedness and the craziness. They're going to be acting like it's normal, normalcy. Um, and then, bam, it's going to happen. So scripture makes it very clear. When the Lord Jesus Christ comes for his church, again, people are going to be walking about business as usual. Marrying, eating, drinking, selling, planting, buying, uh, doing all this stuff. And then as a snare... It's going to come upon the whole world. It's going to happen so suddenly, folks. And we see that day approaching. You know, but like it says in Revelation chapter 3, verse 10 to 11, Because thou hast kept the word of my patience, I also will keep thee from the hour of temptation which shall come upon all the world to try them that dwell upon the earth. That sounds familiar, doesn't it? Which uh, I will keep thee from the hour of temptation which shall come upon all the world. That sounds familiar because in Luke Chapter 21, verse 35, again, for as, it, for, uh, for as a snare, it shall come on all them that dwell on the face of the whole earth. Then in Revelation 3, 11, we read, Behold, I come quickly, hold that fast which thou hast, that no man take thy crown. So you know what? We got to pray that we're accounted worthy to escape all of these things that shall, that shall come to pass during the horrific time known as the tribulation period that is coming, which we are not in yet. We see that day approaching. Uh, we see the coming of the Lord drawing closer by the day. And we see the tribulation period casting its shadow on the earth. But we are not in the tribulation period right now. But if you're asking, what do I have to do to be saved? How can I be accounted worthy to escape these things that shall come to pass and to stand before the Son of Man? The gospel of your salvation is found in the book of 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verse 1 to 4. Believe. You're believing Jesus Christ died on the cross for your sins. The sin debt that you could never pay on your own, Jesus Christ paid it in full with his blood on the cross at Calvary so you could be reconciled back to him, forgiven of your sins, and be with him forever in heaven. So you're believing Jesus Christ died on the cross for your sins. He was buried and he rose again. He resurrected on the third day as it is written in the scriptures. That's the gospel of your salvation. If you're still confused, here's the bottom line. Every single one of us is a sinner. We all miss the mark. We all fall short of the glory of God. And our sin separates us from a holy, a just, and a perfect God. But God loves you so much that he would come down. He would be born of a virgin. He became flesh. He dwelt among us. And he was brutally tortured and crucified and shed his precious blood for you on that cross at Calvary. Again, the sin that, that you could never pay on your own. Jesus Christ paid it in full with his blood on the cross so you could be reconciled back to him, forgiven of your sins, and be with him forever in heaven. That is love, my friends. That is love. The bottom line is this. Heaven and hell are very real, literal places, and you will spend an eternity in one of those destinations. Hell's a real place. It's eternal torment. It's eternal separation from God. I don't want you to go there. Jesus does not want you to go there. But if you die without Jesus Christ, you will be separated from God for eternity in hell. 
And I am going to tell you the truth because I love you. Jesus Christ is the only way to the kingdom of heaven. And he's the only name that can save you. I am begging you. I am imploring you to get saved right now. Put your faith and your trust in the blood of Jesus Christ right now. Believe Jesus Christ died on the cross for your sins. He was buried and he rose again. He resurrected on the third day as it is written in the scriptures. And do it now because tomorrow is not promised. And make no mistake about it. Jesus is coming and he is coming one day very, very, very soon. Keep looking up. Keep watching with me. And God bless you all.